Welcome to the Having It All podcast, the show about what it takes to live an abundant, loving life. My name is Matthew Bivens, and each week I'm helping you get out of your head so that you can truly have it all. Let's do it. What's up? What's up? Welcome to the podcast. My name is Matthew Bivens. This is Having It All. You're freaking awesome. I'm excited you're here. And now I'm done talking like this. It's kind of annoying. <laughs> but truly, uh, I'm pumped for today's conversation. I'm talking about something that is relevant to everybody. How much life can you handle? Have you bitten off more than you can chew in this life of yours? Is, uh, is your, are the contents of your plate bigger than your plate itself? Because for a lot of us, the answer is a resounding yes. And we know it. We feel it in our bodies. But what can you do about it? That's what I'm digging into today. And speaking of today, it's been a been an awesome day. It's been a really tremendous day for, for me. Um, it's a Monday. And, you know, Mondays are great. They've always been really great. But uh, I have had this relationship with my calendar lately where I just have not... It, it, whenever somebody has asked for a spot on my calendar, asked for some of my time, it started to create this really uh, uh, not very pleasant feeling, a very scarce feeling I was having around time. And I'm sharing that, kind of setting this up because my magic is related to today. It's related to Monday. It's related to my calendar. It's related to all of this um, because I just realized I wasn't very intentional with how I was setting up my days. My days tended to be uh, what other people were dictating in terms of meetings and appointments and car availability. It was me sort of reacting to all the things that I had around me as opposed to me saying, okay, what do I want Monday to look like? What do I want Monday to feel like? When do I want to start my day? When do I want to end my day? What do I want Tuesday to look like, feel like, start, end, and carrying that all the way on through the week? So, Oh, last week, last week I had a meeting with my business coach and we sat down and for two hours, we just dug into my calendar. We really just got in there and just looked at what an ideal day and an ideal week looks like and feels like for me. And so that's been totally magical because today I've done something I probably haven't done in a long, long time, but this is my fourth podcast that I'm recording of the day. Fourth. And I have one more after this. So Sarah and I um, interviewed two moms for the Doing It at Home podcast. And then I was interviewed on this awesome podcast called The Ginny Show. That was a lot of fun. And then now I'm doing this episode. And once this concludes, I'm going to be doing another Doing It at Home episode with Sarah. And that's all by design. That's my intention now. Mondays are really intentionally podcast oriented day. And so, you know, this magic is is great for me, but it can also um, really benefit you if you feel like you are a slave to your calendar. If you feel like you're always reacting to things and trying to fit them in and you you sit there and you stare at your calendar you're like, where the heck am I going to fit this thing in? How am I going to move this and move that? Well, then you are 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 experiencing it the way that I was. And so maybe you can look at your calendar and be like, how can I be more intentional? How can I be more intentional about that? So that's my magic. And if you're a new listener and you're like, why the heck are you talking about this? This has nothing to do with the topic. Well, this is magic. And these moments when we've influenced ourselves, others, and life in an empowering way are so important for us to be aware of, for us to shine some light on. Because it's so easy to go through our lives and think that we don't have enough, to think that we aren't being enough. It's so easy for us to have that scarcity mentality. But when we take a minute and we reflect on the magical moments in our lives, when we have gratitude and appreciation for all the things that we are creating and how we're influencing ourselves to show up, that's when we start to settle down have more of an abundant perspective, have more appreciation for who we are and everything that we're creating. And that's why I share magic on the top of every single episode. It's not just to fill in some time. 
It's not just to, to get me warmed up. I don't need to be warmed up. I can jump in and just go right into the topic. But I want to make sure that you're constantly thinking of, man, you know, I'm listening to this show called Having It All, Abundant Loving Life. And I don't really feel like I live an abundant loving life. Well, guess what? My argument is that it's because you aren't recognizing the magical moments in your life. You aren't you're seeing yourself as a, as a powerful creator and seeing how much magic you are creating or you're influencing in your life right now, every single day. You're not doing that enough. If you, are, if you don't feel like you have an abundant, loving life, it's your perspective. And this is how we shift it. That's how we do it. So that's why I'm sharing magic. And I'm going to keep doing it because I got so much magic to share. Now I want to share a little bit of listener love. Because I got a lot of love to share as well. And you all just keep pouring the love onto me. And it's amazing. Keep, keep bringing it. I can handle it. I can receive it. I have a big capacity to receive love. And this week's listener love goes to Erica. Erica, you went to my website. You filled out the form. You just wanted to say what's up. And so I just want to say what's up back to you. So what's up, Erica? I appreciate you. Uh, I loved your message. And one of the things that you said you appreciated about this podcast was that you got from it these vibes. It was, you said, positive yet realistic thinking. And I think that's really cool because, you know, that's, that is what I am intending to do. You know, I want to be empowering. I want you to walk away feeling like you now are equipped with something that you can go and use in your life. But at the same time, I want to be real and be raw and be authentic and be like, yeah, you know what? Sometimes you hit your head on the wall and you got to do it a hundred times. And here's when I've hit my head on the wall and this is how it bled and this is what it felt like because that's life. You know, it's so easy to read a blog article or read an Instagram post. And it's just about this, you know, the stuff that if you do these things, then your life is going to change. And yeah, there might be some truth. But what, what it may not also be talking about, you know, what it may not be addressing is some of the things that come along with that. It's hard to make shifts in your life. It's hard to move from a space of jealousy to a space of openness. It's hard to go from a place where you're just paralyzed by fear to a place where you're ready to and courageous and bold. There's a lot of stuff that happens with that. So, Erica, I appreciate you just, just, you know, giving me that feedback that you get positive yet realistic thinking from this podcast. That's dope. And I also love that you're being proactive in your relationship. That is amazing. You know, you're working from your circle of influence rather than your circle of concern. So, keep that up. If you listening right now want to reach out to me the same way that Erica did, then you can go on my website, matthewbivens.com. There's a little contact tab. You can go in there and I have a form. There's a drop down. You can let me know what you want to, what you want to chat about. If you want to just say what's up like Erica did, cool. Say what's up. We can have a conversation. And uh, otherwise you can hit me up my email, mattcbivens at gmail.com. That's a personal email address. And I'm also on Instagram. I'm enjoying more and more Instagram. And that's at Matthew underscore Bivens. So I'm accessible. I give you multiple ways to get in touch because I want to be in touch. I want to connect. I want to have conversations. You know, it doesn't have to be just just being uh, me behind the mic. You know, I want to hear your perspective. So go and do it. Connect with me. Let's talk about life. Let's talk about life, particularly how much life can you handle right now? Because all of us have these two things going on. We have the lives that we've created. We, kinda, we have our output, you know, what, what our responsibilities are, the things that are expected of us and asked of us, right? We have that in one hand. And then on the other hand, we have our ability to handle all of it. So what do I mean by handle it? What I mean is that how are you relating to the stresses that you have in life? Do you feel like you have a lot of stresses? Are you constantly feeling stressed out? Are you constantly feeling anxious? Are you feeling overwhelmed? If the answer is yes, then what's happening is you have a lot of life, but you don't have a big capacity to handle it. And that's what I want to address because it's not necessarily about 
the life that you have. It's not about the number of kids or the number of jobs or, or, uh, or number of roles that you have, right? Because everybody's different. And you can find people all over the map in that area. It's not about that. It's about how you're able to handle that stuff. What's your capacity? What's your ability to go through life feeling like you have some peace, feeling like you're able to create a sense of flow versus feeling like it's always chaotic and you're always struggling to breathe and you feel like you're drowning? Because those are very different experiences. And those things are within your ability to control and influence. And when you lack the capacity to handle the life that you've created, typically what happens is you need to turn to other things to help you out. So, you know, I have not always been able to handle the life that I created. When I was a a student, when I was in college, I was just overwhelmed with my schoolwork. I was overwhelmed with the pressure that I placed on myself to know what I wanted to do in my life. I was overwhelmed with with, uh, my social life and with the feelings of sadness and loneliness I had around my dating activities and lack thereof. Like all that stuff just got to me. I couldn't handle it all. I just, I couldn't handle it. I kept everything in at the time. I had a group of of, of dude friends, but like I wouldn't tell my buddies what, what was going on. And so... I turned to alcohol. I turned to weed. That's what I used to help fill the gap between the life that I had created and my ability to handle that life. And so if life is just constantly kicking your ass, you just feel like it's constantly kicking your ass. You know, it's not because you're a bad mom or because you're a terrible entrepreneur or because you're, you're failing as a student. And we've all felt that stuff at some time. I'm sure all of us has felt that we are just failing in our roles as an individual. Like, I felt like I was failing as Matthew because I couldn't handle these different things. It's not about that. It's simply about your capacity. Right now, you haven't built your capacity up to be able to handle that, to be able to take on those things, right? Because we've all seen people who look like, and, you know, depending on your relationship with them, you know whether or not they're able to manage themselves with everything they have going on. Like, I've met certain people, I'm like, man, you got so much stuff that you're just flowing with. Like, I always experience you as just, like, easygoing and optimistic and cheerful. Like, how are you, how are you doing that? And what I've found is that it's not genetic, It's not that there's something inherently different with this person that allows them to handle life stressors and that person which 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 has them, you know, suffering through life, their experience they would they would characterize as a suffering experience. It's not something that, you know, you that one person has and the other person can never obtain. It simply has more to do with It has much more to do with your daily habits than anything else. It has much more to do with the things that you rep. Are they healthy? Are they powerful? Are they sustainable? Are they uplifting your energy? And are you doing those things regularly? Because as you do that, your capacity goes up. And, you know, it's so interesting because I was never taught that growing up. I don't think we teach those things to, to, uh, to ourselves, to people, to kids in society. You know, I, I don't remember having conversations with people coming out of college that was like, hey, you know, you're about to step into the, to the adult world and get a job. And that's what you need to do because that's what you do after college. But before you do that, let's just review. Let's take, let's take an assessment of where your capacity is right now. Can you handle... The, uh, the, the stressors once you get outside of the college bubble? 
because they're going to be different and they're going to come at you and they're going to be relentless. Can you handle them? I never had a conversation like that. You know what I mean? And, you know, I, I think back to my parents and, you know, I, don't, I wonder if, if somebody approached them and was like, hey, before you have kid number three, maybe you guys want to take a little bit of an assessment as to where your own ability is right now just to handle stress, just to handle your lives. Just to really, you know, to be there as parents and as, as partners to one another and as working professionals. Like, how are you managing those things? I, you know what? Somebody might have had the conversation, but I highly doubt it. Because that's not what we do. We don't really take a second to reflect and, and truly objectively ask ourselves, do we have the capacity to take on these additional things that we want to take on in life? You know? That's not something that we do. But that's a part of being proactive, that's about being a proactive individual. You do that. You make sure that, hey, you know what? Before I take on this new entrepreneurial gig, before I take on this kid, right? Before we, we welcome a new life into, into our lives, can we handle it? How, how am I, what's my ability right now to just handle what I've currently created? Maybe there's a little bit of work I want to do on myself. Hmm. Maybe I want to I want to become more patient. Maybe I want to work on my resilience. Maybe I want to work on my ability to keep and maintain commitments. Maybe I want to be the type of parent who is able to hold a standard, create a standard and hold it. But I know that right now that's a struggle for me. So maybe I want to work on that for a little bit. You know, so many times we simply want what we want and maybe there's a part of us that knows that we're not able to handle it, but we're like simply I want it. I want to experience another child right now, so I'm going to go ahead and do it, even though I may not be able to handle it. And, and children, that's an easy example to go to, because as you add more children into your life, into your family, your stressors go up. Absolutely. It doesn't matter who you are. Your stressors go up. And so it's so easy to visualize, right? Like on the left hand, you add another child into your family, bloop. Now it's gone up. Now, now the amount of responsibility and stress in your life has gone up. And on the right hand, has your capacity gone up? What are you doing so that your capacity goes up in accordance to, the, to your life so that you can handle it? We don't talk like that. We don't talk like that, you know? So how do you grow your capacity? How do you grow your capacity? Well, you got to be intentional about it. And so what I'm going to share next is, I wrote down 10 things. I don't think I have 10 things. What do I got? Seven. Seven things that you can be doing right now to grow your capacity so that you can handle the life that you're taking on. Because I'm telling you, if you're feeling chronically stressed, if you're feeling chronically overwhelmed, if you're feeling chronically out of balance, If you're feeling chronically tired, mentally, physically, emotionally, drained, you don't have to. That's not that's not the the state that your body wants to be in. That's simply an indication that you've got too many things on your plate. And so there's a couple things you can do. You can take things off your plate. I've done that. I've taken things off my plate in the past. But you can also increase the size of your plate. Here's seven ways to do that. First, practice gratitude. You know it. You've heard it. Are you doing it? Practice gratitude. Be intentional about looking at your life and seeing all the amazing things, people, relationships that you have. Be intentional about that. Reflect on your magical moments. That's why I share it at the top of the podcast. Because every time I'm doing that, my capacity goes up. Life stressors don't feel as tough once I give myself a little bit of perspective to see, holy crap, I'm truly living an abundant loving life. Okay, well, you know what? The fact that I need to put some repairs on my car and I may not have it for a few days, you know what? That's not going to stress me out as much. I got so, so much abundance around me. There's people who are going to be able to show up and help me get to where I need to go. Sweet. I'm all set. That's the type of thing that gratitude and seeing those magical moments does for you. So that's the first thing. You want to grow your capacity? 
practice gratitude. Number two, exercise regularly. Move your body. Stretch your body. Love on your body. You know, when you're exercising, when you're at the gym and you're moving weights or you're running on a trail or whatever, you're simply putting stress on your body. You're putting physical stress on your body. And our bodies, they don't really know the difference between different types of stressors. Physical stress from working out, emotional stress from challenges with a partner, mental stress from a tough problem at work. Your body tends to respond to those stressors similarly. You know, the heart rate goes up. You start to sweat. You start to, to, you know, things start to pump and flow through your body and sometimes you get hyper-focused. So when you approach exercise as time for you to work on how you handle stress, then guess what? You begin to become more aware on whether or not you handle stress powerfully. And as you work on that, your capacity goes up. Because when you add that extra kid or you bring on that second job or you take on those additional responsibilities at work, your stressors go up. So then when you step into an exercise and you think, okay, you know what? As I'm doing these push-ups and as I start getting to the point where my body wants to stop, this is just me going through stress. So let me relate to that powerfully. Let me breathe. Let me become present. Let me be mindful of those thoughts that are telling me it hurts. And when it hurts, you abandon ship. That's what happens a lot of times, right? When things get stressful, When things get tough, we want to go in the opposite direction of it. But you can use exercise to truly, truly work on that. And I always recommend start small. If exercise is new for you, start small and increase over time. You know? My favorite go-to exercise for this is the squat hold. The squat hold. Simply sit on a wall like you're sitting on a chair. Feet in front of you. Thighs are parallel with the floor. Back is straight and you're in a seated position on the wall, and hold it for 30 seconds. I guarantee you, towards the end of that 30 seconds, you're going to start feeling it. Your body's going to start heating up. You're going to feel it in your legs, in your butt, in your back, and your mind starts to go. It's going to start to go in those areas where you you automatically kick in those stressful, those stressful thoughts, the way you cope with it. That's an amazing way for you to begin to work on that relationship. All right, so one was practice gratitude. Two was exercise regularly. Three, step into your fears. Step into your fears, people. Guess what? Your capacity goes up each and every time you face a fear. It is that simple. It is that simple. Small fears are effective. It works. You know, asking a stranger to borrow the condiments on their table if you're afraid of talking to strangers, right? But big fears, man, you step into a big fear, you can quantum leap, as my coach likes to say, quantum leap. That happens when you have that conversation with your partner that you've been wanting to have for years and it's terrified you because you're like, what if they leave me? But you're like, you know what? I need to have this conversation because that's what staying true to myself is. And you have the conversation. Wow, you can quantum leap off of that. That can totally evaporate fears. So stepping into fears, whether they're small or large, your capacity goes up. You can handle more life because you realize, wow, you know what? The fears are bigger in my mind than they are in reality. And you know what? I didn't die. I'm still here. And you know what? The worst thing that I could conceive of didn't happen. Not really. And it wasn't that terrible. That's what happens when you step into fears. You realize that, man, your mind is just this amazing machine that can blow things up. So step into your fears and you raise your capacity. Number four, similar with that, step into stressful situations. Step into stressful situations with the intention of becoming aware of your relationship with that stress. I use the example that I was going to use according to my notes right here. (laughs) I use the examples of squat holes when I was talking about exercise. But yeah, Squat holds. It's stress on your body. Last week, I went for a 30-minute run before, uh, b- before teaching a class. And that's 30 minutes of stress. And I did the run with no music, no podcast, just in silence. Because I wanted to really just be connected to it. 
And I'm like, huh, that's 30 minutes of stress. I have 30 minutes to really tune in to what's going on. Oh my gosh, this is so long. Uh, I want to turn the treadmill down. I'm going too fast. Man, I got this cramp in my side. And what is this? My toe feels like it's about to fall off. Oh, imagine what going through that for 30 minutes and learning how to just be at peace with all those things does for you. Your capacity goes up. So step into stressful situations. That's number four. Number five out of seven, find role models who are healthy, powerful, and sustainably taking on life. Those, help, those role models who are just doing it. Find those people and bring them into your life. Stand next to them. Sit next to them. Learn from them. You only need one. You only need one person whose capacity matches the life that they've created for you to start to learn from them. Be like, oh, that's how it's done. That's what it looks like. Ah, okay. So go in and find that person. Somebody within your sphere within your circles, is that person. They're handling their stress powerfully. They're doing it in a healthy way. And that's what you have to really key into. Because like I said earlier, you can handle stress in a lot of different ways. Not all of them are healthy. Not all of the ways that we cope with our lives are healthy. Trust it. Friday, Friday happy hours when you're going there because you just had a long day and you just need to let go of that steam and you want to do it with drinks and you want to do it with all sorts of food. It might be fun. It's not healthy. It's not raising your energy. Right? And it's not a personal thing. You know, you can just look at it like, is it raising my energy or lowering my energy? Is it sustainable or not? So just look at it like that when you're thinking about how you can, you can handle life's stressors. So again, number five was find role models who are doing it, who are being it, and watch them. Number six is practice mindfulness. Man, mindfulness. I love it. Just just, uh, completed the the 30-day trust challenge in August, and mindfulness was one of the deposits that I was making. And mindfulness habits like meditation, they help you get back to your center, So when you're feeling out of whack and you're feeling overwhelmed, it's because you're not operating from your center. You're in this state of reacting to all these things that are happening in life. You're being pulled in different directions. Maybe you're operating from a spouse center and your spouse is pulling you left. And then maybe you're operating from a kid center and your kid's pulling you right. Maybe you're operating from a work center and your work is pulling you in a different direction. But when you get back to your powerful center, when you operate from principle, That's how you do it. Mindfulness truly, truly helps. So work on building mindfulness into your daily life. And it's simple, right? Mindfulness and meditation are different. Mindfulness is all about just becoming very aware on the present moment, just tuning in. So things like taking a walk around your neighborhood or breathing, just take five deep breaths where you are. Or go to your car on a lunch break and do a 10-minute meditation. There's a million videos on YouTube. Type in 10-minute meditation. You'll find a bunch. Go and just close your eyes and listen to one of those. And use that as a way to recenter. And you keep doing that. Keep recentering yourself and your capacity goes up. That's number six. Last one, number seven. Create and find meaning in your life. When you have a big why for your life, you want to freaking embrace it. You want to embrace life when there's tons of meaning in it for you. When something that's not very fun (laughs) has meaning, you're more willing to do it. You know, I really, really dislike having my teeth cleaned, having my teeth worked on or my mouth worked on. Just anything around that I don't like at all. But I'm connected to the greater meaning and benefits of oral health and hygiene. I get it. It's important. So I get it done. I can go and get my teeth looked at and get them cleaned. And the entire time I'm in that chair, I'm sweating and I can't wait for it to be done, you know? But I have found meaning in that act. It works the same way on a small scale to a large scale. It works the same in your life. Find meaning. Create meaning. 
You know, sometimes finding that word find, I have to go and search for the meaning. I don't know. But you know what? Create is a little more proactive, a little more intention around creating meaning in your life. And when you do that, then you can take a step back and you can say, wow, you know, I got a lot of things going on, but I understand why I'm doing all of it. And that right there can raise your capacity. You can be like, man, okay, I feel more resilient because now I'm really connected to why I'm working at this place or why I'm serving these people. Whatever it is, create that meaning around it for you. And that's seven right there. Those are the seven things you can be doing right now to grow your capacity so that you can handle the life that you've created. I'll run through them again real quick. One, practice gratitude. Two, exercise regularly. Three, step into your fears. Four, step into stressful situations. Five, find role models. Six, practice mindfulness. And seven, create and find meaning in your life. I guarantee if you start enacting habits around these things, your capacity will go up. And a habit is something that you do regularly. Doing something once or twice. It's not a habit. That's just an action. All right? I can go and rollerblade today, and, but I, I don't have a habit around rollerblading. <laughs> if I did it every single day, then okay, yeah, now, now I've got one. And that's a stupid example, but you get the point. If you're creating habits around these things, and you're habitually working on raising your capacity, your capacity goes up. And it takes time. It totally takes time. You know, like if you're planning another child or maybe you just had another child and you're like, boy, I just, I would love to go from a two in my capacity up to a nine. It doesn't happen overnight. But you can kickstart that process and get things rolling and you can add different habits in there like the mindfulness one or practicing gratitude, which are going to help you feel better in the moment. So there's a lot of things you can be doing, but I just really want you to take away that it's, it, these are habits, so make sure that you're, you're making those deposits and you're performing those habits regularly and be committed to it. Be committed to the long haul because you know what? Life changes when you're able to handle what you've created. It truly does. It opens up. You're like, wow, okay, I can do a whole lot. All right. And even if you don't want to add more to your plate, well, you have a better experience of what's on your plate. Like imagine if the things that are stressing you out like crazy right now just kind of rolled off your back. If you can manage them a little bit more powerfully. How would you feel? How would you feel if you loved Mondays? How would your life be different if you were just like, you know what? I got a long day of work ahead of me, but I'm excited. I'm about to get into some cool stuff. I'm about to learn some things about myself. I'm about to serve and I love serving, so... Let's go do it. How would your life shift if that was your attitude? Right? So that's why we work on raising our capacity. Because I know that a lot of us have some big plans for our lives. Big doesn't necessarily look like taking on a lot. You know, big can be giving out a lot. Big can be whatever it is. But we got these big plans. And so let's make sure that our capacities meet the lives that we're creating. And that they continue to go up as more and more things get brought into your life. As you take on more and more, you want your capacity to go up as well. Because we want to just be joyful and excited and energetic. We want to be able to be that all throughout our day and all the different roles that we take on. That's important to me and I know it's important to you. So these seven things that I just outlined will absolutely help you with that. And I'm excited to hear what some of your healthy habits are. And uh, you can actually watch mine, by the way. So, you know, I use the Your Day Balance Game app called the Balance Chart to build my capacity. And that's what I've been using for years to build my capacity. And what's cool about doing so on the app is it starts out with, you know, you're able to, to um, have just a couple of habits in all these different categories. But then over time, as your capacity goes up, you can add more and more habits. So I could literally have seen that from when I started five years ago to where I'm at now, I'm taking on more healthy, health, healthy habits because my capacity keeps rising. 
And as I hold to my commitment and I'm consistent, my capacity goes up. So I dig that tool for doing it because it puts everything in my phone and it's right there centralized and it's easy to use. But you don't need technology to do this. You can go analog, you can go old school. You just need to be intentional and just do it. Show up for yourself. So let me know what comes up for you in this episode. How much life can you currently handle? Maybe share with me the gap. Maybe share with me the gap, yeah, of like the life that you've created and that you've taken on and where your ability to handle it is. Talk to me about what's what you're doing to cover that gap. Were you like me? Were you drinking a lot? Were you smoking weed? Were you just, you know, whatever it is. I mean, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm down for a conversation. Truly am. So I appreciate you hanging out with me on this episode of the podcast. I hope you got something out of it. And uh, I look forward to connecting with you and just experiencing how you are creating your abundant loving life. My name is Matthew Bivens, and here is to you having it all. Quick note about the Having It All podcast. I am not a doctor nor a licensed therapist. I'm a guy with a story and a passion for conscious conversation. My thoughts, opinions, and beliefs are my own. So please consult with your doctor or healthcare provider regarding any questions or issues you have related to your personal, physical, or mental health.